is killing our kids. We need help. We need help. A small amount of a potent drug is proving deadly for teens and young adults here in the metro. In 2020, the United States saw five overdose deaths a day. In Kansas, we had three overdose deaths every two days. Many of them can be traced back to fentanyl. Reporter Megan Abundance takes this story 360, giving you multiple perspectives on what's being done to fight fentanyl. We all want to write our own destiny. It turns out trace amounts of a deadly drug is erasing many futures. Fentanyl is sweeping across the metro and it's local law enforcement's number one priority. It doesn't discriminate what zip code you live in, it's here. Just this much of it, enough to fit on the tip of a pencil, can be deadly. Two to three milligrams, a salt granule. It's extremely, extremely small amounts. More 18 to 45 year olds died from fentanyl overdoses last year compared to COVID-19, car crashes and gun violence. It's the number one killer of young adults. We're taking this issue 360, hearing from police chiefs from both sides of the state line. This is a health crisis and epidemic. A drug processing specialist. This is something we're trying to get off the street as quickly as we can. A lawmaker, a school doctor, newly drug educated parents, a detective who's working to make a change. It is paramount at this point. And families who have lost teenagers. I want um, no other family members to go through what, what I've gone through. My soul has been like a hole ripped in it and um, it's a constant like hurt in your your gut, you know, of, you know, he's gone. Rebecca Everett knows fentanyl changes families. Her son Taylor died of an overdose. She helps educate other parents. You think, well, I know what a fake pill would look like and you don't. That's causing parents like Penny Thomas to pay attention. This is something that we all know very little about. She's got kids nearing high school. You hear it and you think it's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to my kids or people that I know, and it just sounds like mistakes happen. Sarah Manser is turning her son Ashton's deadly mistake into a warning for I-70 drivers to see. He was kind. He called me mama. I miss that, you know. If I can even stop one, one person um, from overdosing, I, I will definitely. We had uh, three subjects at a known fentanyl house. The Clay County Sheriff's Office and the Excelsior Springs Police Department team up to search for fentanyl. Detective Nelson runs the county's drug enforcement program. I've never seen anything like it in my 24 years, ever. Um, so that's the hard part. And, you know, we're, you know, I hate to say it, but it's almost triage. That's the way we're dealing with it right now. We were there after they made eight arrests in one day. Chief Greg Dole worries that drug dealers are changing their tactics. They're even um, packaging it in colored pills, presumably to make it attractive toward younger and younger group. Andy Warner gets a first-hand look at fentanyl. I even will triple bag it, even with gloves on, just to keep from getting contaminated. He's an investigator with Excelsior Springs, testing the strength of what officers recover. These pills symbolize, symbolize an overdose to me. I mean, that's a lethal amount right there. Even one of them's a lethal amount. I hope we get a lot more of it tonight. Kansas Senator Roger Marshall is working to limit overdoses. I'm doing what we can to make sure we get Narcan into all of the school systems. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says the number of prescriptions for it doubled in recent years. Narcan was key at Kearney High School last year. A school nurse on Dr. Heather Gilkey's team used Narcan to save a student. In class and literally fell out. Um, and the teacher immediately knew something wasn't right. They're increasing their supply across all schools, too. We would have lost one of our students. I love you, love Ethan! You. A deadly overdose at Oak Park High School just last year. Ethan Everly, a sophomore, died after taking a pill laced with fentanyl. He was a leader in our friend group. He always pushed us to do better. He wanted us to succeed, do good in life. It is vigils like this pain like this, which is why so many people are drawing the line against fentanyl. I think people should be very, very concerned. In the Metro, I'm Megan Abundas, KSHB 41 News. Folks, do you have a thought about this story or a topic you'd like us to go 360 on? Send us an email, 360 at KSHB.com and follow KSHB 41 on social media to join the conversation.